I like hidden bases, you like hidden bases, this guy likes hidden bases, we all like hidden bases, but what's the best kind of hidden base? I would say it's a bunker, and what's the best kind of bunker? Well it's a bunker, inside of 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 a bunker. You get the idea. If you truly want to keep your Minecraft resources secure, then your bunkers have to have bunkers. And those bunkers have to have more bunkers. Can you tell that I'm excited? You know, I'm, I'm normally excited about building just one bunker, but the idea of building multiple bunkers in one video, that's just a little bit too much. My tiny little brain is just overflowing with joy. So I think bunker number one is going to be your more traditional Minecraft bunker. It's going to have all of the things that you regularly need inside of your bunker. Things like emergency chests, furnaces, other bits and pieces like that. We basically want it to feel like this is the only bunker. So if someone manages to gain access to our bunker, then they won't think to try and access the bunker underneath our bunker. And then all of the subsequent bunkers that follow. So for the first entrance for our first bunker, I want to do something relatively fancy which is to create a big 3x3 three three hidden trap door underneath the ground that will open up when we place down a redstone torch somewhere on any of these blocks. Now this is the piston layout that I've ended up with, so we've got some slime blocks and we've got some honey blocks, and now I need to make all of this stuff function so we can push all of these blocks up to fill this hole. Things, th things are not going well. Uh, this is not what is meant to be happening. I, I don't know what I've done, but it's awful. I mean, just look at this. Look at this mess that I've created on the surface. There's even wool up there. That's a problem. Okay, I think a lot of the problems stem from the fact that I didn't have transparent objects here. So that means that these pistons got powered immediately and just pushed all of their blocks through the ceiling. I'm hoping now everything should all work. That was a very, very strong start. So if I just quickly place in the blocks on top of those honey blocks and the slime blocks... That looked pretty good, and then if I open everything up, almost. We just need a tiny bit of extra delay on these two repeaters, and that should be everything. I imagine that is everything. So that is it closed, and that is everything open. So there we go. We have got ourselves a 3x3 opening, flick the lever, and everything has fully closed up. That's fancy. Now time to build up the redstone torch key. So when this redstone torch is placed on the side of this block right here, this piston will extend and that should activate our redstone contraption. So that will open up our trap door and then we need another piston underneath this block right here which is going to push up and that's going to break our redstone torch. Okay, it's not going to push up, it's actually going to pull down. But this all seems to be working. I just need to connect it up to a little T flip-flop and that is looking pretty good. So now we actually need to get the bunker in place and I think I'm going to go for a slightly futuristic look for our first little bunker. It's not particularly traditional, but that seems like a lot of fun. And as is tradition with anything futuristic, the white concrete and the cyan terracotta comes out. I don't know why, as soon as I think of futuristic, these are the colors that I think of. I think this is a pretty good shell to work with, so I'm going to start adding in all of the bits for the bunker in a second, but I thought I would quickly get my next bunker idea in place. The way that I'm going to get down into it, I think, is going to be a cauldron in this spot right here. So you stand inside the cauldron and then the cauldron drops us through into the next bunker. It will feel feel like something out of Harry Potter, I think. I would say this is a pretty futuristic storage system. Then the furnaces. And finally, the button that allows us to open and close our piston door. And I would say that this right here is a pretty solid little bunker. It has no lights. And now it does. So as I say, now it's time to traverse from this bunker into the next one. We're going to go from the future into the world of Harry Potter, I think. We should really just dip into that vibe. So the way that I'm going to do this is, I mean, how far down do we need to go? Um, probably about here. Yeah, this seems like a good place to start our next bunker. Okay, that's that's actually quite a long way. I was originally planning on making use of a six-piston extender with all the slime blocks and things, but now that I'm looking at it, it would probably make more sense to just have a flying machine back here. So a small setup just like this, which takes our cauldron down to the bottom, and then another setup down here, which pushes our cauldron back up to the top. The only problem is that leaves us with a really, really big gap. If we push this down to the bottom, you can see that we're left with almost like a slice out of this wall. That's that's what we're left with. And I'm thinking, I wonder if there's something that we can do about this, potentially making use of concrete powder. So if I fill in all this space here, 
I mean, that has to push a lot of blocks. Is that too many? And more importantly, is this concrete powder going to bust through the roof of our bunker, obviously revealing the location? Okay, well, we've passed the first test. Now let's see... No, we haven't actually created a mound either. We had the perfect amount of concrete powder, so that... That solves the problem. And I've got to say, I think the concrete powder looks really, really nice up in this room. I actually think it's a cool addition. So how should we activate this thing? Obviously, we don't just want a button on the wall. That's not particularly secretive. Um, Maybe if we put a specific type of item inside of one of those furnaces, that could do the trick. And with that idea, this level is now all done. If I place in a piece of redstone ore into this furnace, then it will be smelted up, converted into a piece of redstone dust. That redstone dust will then drop through into the item filter which will send a redstone signal through into our flying machine, allowing us to drop through into the next level. So there we go, that has all worked. Our next level looks horrible at this point in time. Time for us to fix all of that up and make it look incredibly gorgeous. And as I said earlier on, like something out of Harry Potter. I swear they're not sponsoring me to keep saying that, but Harry, if you're watching, my DMs are open. And I hope you like your new bunker. So I've got a decent quantity of it all done. So you can see we've got a few kind of broken up wooden walls. We've got the lanterns. We've got the broken up stone floor and things. And I'm thinking these slots right here can be for enchanting. I feel like enchanting definitely fits the Harry Potter theme and also potion brewing. I mean, that's that's a useful thing to have. This looks very, very fancy. And the good news is it is actually functional. We do get level 30 enchantments here. I am really liking the way that this little bunker is coming together. I'm a fan. I think it looks cool. And now we should probably work out how we're going to move on to the next bunker in this very long chain of bunkers that we're creating. And let's be honest, it's not very often that you get the opportunity to build up a hidden entrance inside of a bookcase without it looking like the bookcase has come out of nowhere. We actually have bookcases that are required here, so we should probably make a hidden entrance out of them. One thing that I've always seen people do with these kind of medieval builds is they put buttons everywhere. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm also going to make use of said buttons to actually activate our hidden activation device. Now, I've been thinking through the different types of doors that I could use for this entrance because it's a 3x3 area. Originally, I was thinking of just doing a standard 3x3 piston door. Then I thought of a 3x3 spiral door, but I actually really like the idea, proper hidden entrance style, of the door almost sliding across out the way, revealing a staircase that takes us down into the next bunker. I think that's probably the best way of doing things, which means that we're gonna have to whip out the slime blocks and the honey blocks once again. I swear, redstone in 2021 is 90% slime blocks and honey blocks, and I'm not mad about it. So there we go, our sliding bookshelf door is now all completed with the help of slime block and honey block flying machines. And then when it comes to the activation, I thought having the player press just one button isn't particularly secure so instead the player has to press two buttons in quick succession and that allows our door to open up and this is all achieved just using a very simple little and gate this this little circuit right here that's what's doing all of the logic here okay on to our next bunker and i have no clue what the theme of this one is going to be now that i've cleared out the space i'm definitely thinking some form of armory you know because bunkers they're all about getting underneath the ground preparing for wars and things like that so having some place where we have all of the weapons maybe even Oh, we could totally have a target practice area in here. Are we going to have some tar- Yes, yes, yes. And I've thought of a really cool way in which we can use the targets. I'm excited about that. So this right here is what I think of when I think of an armory. This is how I imagine it looks. We've got some reinforced looking kind of concrete reinforcements. As you can tell, I'm not really versed in, in the terminology of these building things. So as I say, we've got these reinforced reinforcements, which are reinforcing our area of the bunker. And then I guess along this wall here... I suppose we could just have, yeah, a bunch of shulker boxes which will have various different weapons and things on the inside of them. We don't have to go too crazy here. Of course, the most important thing is our little targets out the back. So let's, I mean, I, you know, I, I've got to embarrass myself. Okay, let's see. Let's see what happens here. Right, I'm locked and loaded. And I'm thinking that was, that was dreadful. That was beyond dreadful. I'm actually embarrassed. I am the person who's editing this video, so I could conveniently cut that out. So this is my first time making use of the archery range here, and... Oh, I mean, look at that. I am I am a natural. I am a natural. My first time... Can you believe this is my first time? What a talent. What an absolute talent I've got. <laughs> if I forget to edit out my first try, that's going to be really, really embarrassing. But anyway, here's what I'm thinking code-wise. I reckon with these two targets right here, you should have to try and shoot it in the middle, and then also get a bullseye on this one right here. And then we'll get a redstone output through both of these comparators. And only if you get a bullseye in both of them 
will you actually be able to open the hidden entrance? Now this is going to require a tiny bit of work because with target blocks, it's not a constant output from the target block. Instead, you're getting a pulse. So we're gonna have to add some pulse extenders into the mix. But outside of that, I don't think it should be too complicated. And I was right, so we've got the two pulse extenders, we've got an AND gate out the back, and if I just shoot one crossbow into here, boom, we got ourselves an output. And then this one as well, we got ourselves an output on that one, and you can see our redstone line has turned off. And then as soon as the pulse extenders switch off, that's when our redstone line turns back on again. So if we run an inverter from this, then that means that we will get an output when this redstone line is off and we can run that into our hidden entrance. And as far as our hidden entrance is concerned, I think I've come up with a really cool idea. So I'm going to retract these stairs backwards and swap them out for stairs that are upside down and retract these stairs downwards and swap them out for stairs facing in the opposite direction and create almost like a zigzag in our staircase. So it's a hidden separate staircase that goes in the opposite direction to the original staircase. It's very cool. It's very, very cool. It's gonna be quite big, but it's gonna be very cool. And the reason it has to be so big is because we've got all these block swappers and things you know we have to push six blocks across which requires three pistons on either end it's massive anyway i have the first part of the circuitry in place which let's be honest is <laughs> that's not particularly exciting is it it is going to get better from there i promise and in fact it's about to get a lot better because i think it might all be done so those stairs have to face in that direction and then the stairs in this swapper have to be upside down and facing in the opposite direction and then if i just quickly connect this up to our little target block hidden activation device and get my aim on we should see that is one and that is number two and then here is our hidden staircase. How fancy is that? <laughs> that is incredibly fancy. And now if I quickly just chuck down this temporary button and flip the T-flip flop back over. That is so cool. This is ridiculously cool. This is ridiculously, ridiculously, ridiculously cool. It's one of those redstone contraptions that I could watch all day, but I have to stop watching it because we've got more bunkers to build. And yes, this stair being the wrong way up annoyed me as much as it annoyed you. Okay, I noticed it, but I like that clip, so I'm leaving it in. Anyway, that's enough of that. We've got another bunker to build. And what is going to go in this one? Um, I mean, I have a few different ideas. I'm stuck between making this my nether room, like a big nether portal room, or making it my farming room because currently we don't have any farms in this area right now. I think the redstone person inside of me is telling me that this should be a farming room. We need to have some form of food supply inside of our bunker. Otherwise, there's not much of a bunker. With that being said, these aren't going to be particularly technical redstone farms. In fact, I don't even know if I'm going to use any redstone at all. We're going to do this the Martian style. And by that, I mean we're going to be growing an awful lot of potatoes in a fairly small room. I have gone super 2012 Minecraft with this construction. This reminds me of my early cave bases. And you know what? I like it. I like it. It feels really nostalgic. And another thing that feels really nostalgic is the way that I'm going to do the hidden activation device. So obviously this is a farming room. It makes sense that you would have a couple of chests. You'd have a couple of hoes inside of the chest. And also you'd have a bunch of bone meal and things. Well, I want to make use of the hoes to actually activate our hidden activation device. I mean, I made a video on this way back in, I think, 2012. I actually did this in 2012, is the host switch. So this is, of course, a bit of an old school system, but now it's time to go incredibly, incredibly new school. Is that a thing? Is saying new school a thing? I feel like saying new school definitely isn't a thing. Enderpearl stasis chambers. That's how we're going to be getting into this final room of the bunker, and this final room of the bunker is going to be all about diamonds. I mean, you know, it's a bunker, the last room, the most secure room technically, has to be filled with diamonds. I don't care that netherite is technically more expensive, I just think diamonds look fancier. So now I just need to connect up the hose switch that's all the way down there into the enderpearl stasis chamber, which is all the way up there. I could have built this room anywhere, and I chose to build it literally as far away from where I need to connect it to as possible. Why did I do that? Regardless, it should now be fully connected, so if I just chuck an enderpearl into here, it should float around up at the top and it's not going to despawn it's just going to stay there then if i make my way across into the farming room and grab myself a hoe and activate the hose switch i reappear up in the diamond vault these things will never get boring these things will never get boring 
It feels like something like just straight out of the future. Now, how do you get yourself out of the diamond vaults? Well, technically we don't need a hidden exit for this one because we're not going through into the next hidden bunker. Instead, we're going to drop through into this part of the hidden bunker. So we're kind of looping around. We've done a little loop and now we're back in the thick of it. So let's go through the full chain of hidden bunkers. We start things off out in the field. If I place in a redstone torch right here, that opens up our three by three piston door, which takes us into the first futuristic hidden bunker. Then if we head over to this furnace and dump in a piece of redstone ore, then that will activate our little cauldron drop down, which will take us into the much less futuristic area of our base quite heavily inspired by Harry Potter. Now, if we want to make our way into the next part of the hidden bunker, we have to hit both of these buttons in quick succession, and that will pull our bookshelves across, and that will take us into the firing range, which is a pretty cool looking area. And if we're incredibly good at the firing range and we get two bullseyes in both of these targets, then that will open up this hidden staircase which will allow us to move into the farming zone. So let's just close up that staircase behind us, which I always think looks incredibly satisfying, but it's nowhere near as satisfying as that. I, I can't get enough of Enderpearl Stasis Chambers. I know I've said it a million times, they're fantastic. And of course, if we want to leave this entire bunker network, all I have to do is make my way back into the armory. I can run up this staircase right here, and I can actually close up this piston door behind me. I can pop into my cauldron, and I can travel up to the futuristic zone just by pressing that button right there. And then if I open everything up, I can fly out making use of my Elytra, which I definitely have if I have a bunker like this. And I can chuck down a redstone torch and everything is closed behind me. I think we can all agree that this hidden bunker inside of a 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 hidden bunker is pretty fancy. I've really enjoyed working on this redstone project. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Now, one thing that hasn't been quite so enjoyable about this recording process is the fact that there is an insane storm going on in the UK right now and the winds are going crazy, especially because we're getting building work done to our house and there's like tarpaulin and scaffolding everywhere. I'm hearing all these crazy noises and every five seconds I feel like the house is actually going to fall down. So it's been a bit of a panicky recording.